Hello everybody, this is Mina Azar and you are watching the Surgical Whiteboard. Today we will continue talking about the colon carcinoma. We will talk about the management of colon carcinoma, starting with the general rules of therapeutic approaches. The choice of the therapeutic pathway depends on the stage of the disease. For stages 1, 2 and 3, the treatment of choice is surgical resection with or without adjuvant chemotherapy. Stage 4 represents a metastasized tumor. It was considered before an advanced stage of tumor beyond the reach of curative uh, approaches. But now we can see in modern guidelines, resectable metastasis can be also uh, removed. Then adjuvant chemotherapy uh, can be given with a good impact on longevity. But this approach is up till now only reserved for relative early cases with good general conditions. Other than that, advanced cases can be uh, treated with palliative options, in which palliative resection remains the best palliative option, because the patient will develop, if not treated, a fatal and cell obstruction sooner or later, which will in turn require operative management. It's wise uh, also uh, to perform the operation on elective basis other than in the middle of the night. Last options include uh, includes palliative chemotherapy and best supportive cares. The change of treatment philosophy can be noticed here in considering the resectable metastasis in a, in a relative healthy patient among the potentially uh, curative approaches. Now we will talk about the principles of surgical resection. The first principle is uh, how to determine the extent of resection. This depends on the uh, location of the tumor itself in relation to the feeding vessels of this part of the colon. This is important for two reasons. Number one, removing of a part of, of the colon with its feeding vessels ensures that the removal uh, of the potentially infiltrated lymph nodes which dramatically affect the rate of recurrence. Number two, following feeding vessels rule ensures a good blood supply of the remaining part, which is crucial for a safe uh, anastomosis. Keeping these rules in mind, we can know now that a sound removal of tumors in cecum, ascending colon or hepatic flexure, requires removal of the part of the colon fed by the iliocolic artery, right colic artery, and the right branch of the middle colic artery. This means removal of cecum, ascending colon, hepatic flexure, and about one-third of the transverse colon. This is known as the right hemicolectomy. For sigmoid tumors, the section of sigmoid colon along with the sigmoidal branches of the inferior mesenteric artery is performed. Tumors of the descending colon are treated with the removal of the sigmoid colon, descending colon, splenic flexure, and the distal one-third of the transverse colon, along with the central ligation of the inferior mesenteric artery, which is known as the high tie, and the left branch of the middle colic artery. In tumors of the transverse colon, an extended right hemicolectomy is performed, which follows the same um, resection requirements of the right hemicolectomy in addition to removal of the whole transverse colon and splenic flexure, along with the left branch of the middle colic artery. Lastly, the tumors of the splenic flexure are treated with a partial hemicolectomy procedure, which requires the removal of the splenic flexure along with the distal third of the transverse colon as well as the proximal third of the descending colon. The feeding vessels are the left branch of the middle colic artery and the ascending branch of the left colic artery. To summarize, the five main procedures are the right hemicolectomy, the extended right hemicolectomy, sigmoidectomy, left hemicolectomy, partial left hemicolectomy. The second rule is the central ligation of the vascular reticle as close as possible to its origin. The third rule addresses the lymph node harvest. At least 12 lymph nodes should be harvested in the specimen in order to evaluate the end stage of the tumor. This includes the paracolic lymph nodes, mesenterical lymph nodes, and central lymph nodes, along with any suspicious lymph nodes. The fourth rule is the mucosal safety margin, which should be at least 5 cm between the tumor and the resection line, preferably 10 cm when possible. Number five, an untouched technique should be used 
with uh, uh, number six, which is an in block resection to avoid local tumor spread or peritoneal seeding. Number seven is approach. Laparoscopic and open approaches are both equivalent and should be decided according to the surgeon's expertise. The last principle is following the CME or the complete mesocolic excision, which is in a way a summary of all the previous principles. It includes dissecting along the uh, embryonal plane of the mesocolon, maximal lymph node harvesting, and central ligation of the feeding blood vessels. Now let's move to the detailed algorithm of management of colon carcinoma according to the most recent American and European guidelines. As we said before, the therapeutic pathway depends uh, to, uh, to a great extent on the initial stage of the tumor. Stages 1, 2, and 3 shares the initial step of operative resection with curative intention according to the previous principle of oncological surgery in colon carcinoma. Stage 1 requires only follow-up postoperatively, while stage 2 must be divided according to the presence of risk factors. Here, by risk factors, we mean factors that can indi um, indicate the presence of undetected lymph node infiltration, which renders the staging uh, of the tumor from stage 2 to stage 3. These factors are a T4 tumor, a tumor perforation uh, preoperatively, an intraoperative tumor dissection, emergency operations, uh, less than 12 lymph nodes harvested in the specimen, the presence of uh, lymph vessels infiltration, L1, or uh, V1, which is veins infiltrations. In the absence of these risk factors, the microsatellite stability should be evaluated in the pathological report. Microsatellite stable tumors have worse prognosis but benefit from chemotherapy, so a different chemotherapy is justified. On the other hand, microsatellite in stable tumors have a better prognosis and don't benefit much from the chemotherapy, which fails to justify the uh, adjuvant chemotherapy. The presence of risk factors, which means a potential stage 3 or an evidence stage 3 by positive nodal stage, both requires postoperative chemotherapy. In a nutshell, adjuvant chemotherapy is required in a stage 3, stage 2 with risk factors of becoming stage 3, or uh, microsatellite stable tumors of stage 2 without risk factors. Regarding stage 4, which includes distant metastasis, here we must differentiate between stage 4 with a resectable metastasis of lung or liver and primary irresectable metastasis as well as metastasis elsewhere like peritoneal metastasis which is a stage 4C. In resectable metastasis of lung and liver, uh, it can be managed either by primary resection with adjuvant chemotherapy or 3 months chemotherapy then resection, then, then adjuvant chemotherapy. On the other hand, primary irresectable metastasis does not mean giving up the hope of a potential curative management. In patients with good general condition and willing to undergo ex extensive therapy, a neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, as an attempt to downstaging can be given. After evaluation, when the tumor is rendered resectable, uh, the patient passes to the limb of operation and adjuvant chemotherapy when not uh, the patient passes to the palliative limb with palliative chemotherapy or best supportive care. So take home messages are adjuvant chemotherapy depends on the lymph node metastasis evidence or uh, potential. Resectable metastasis are potentially curable. Neoadjuvant therapy is only on if, of benefit in potentially resectable metastasis. The previous statements raise an important question, which is how to evaluate a stage 4 tumor to be resectable or not. Careful selection of patients in this stage is very important, as the patient will undergo a complex therapeutic course with a risky operation, so this decision must be good justified and adds a remarkable benefit regarding the, the expected life duration and quality. A good tool to use in this regard is the FONC criteria, which are in the positive tumor at the first diagnosis, stage 2 or 3, when at, uh, addressing a metachronous metastasis, uh, 
less than 12 months interval between the primary resection of the tumor and the diagnosis of the metastasis. Preoperative carcino embryonic antigen, more than uh, 200 nanogram per milliliter. And two more factors regarding, regarding the liver metastasis, uh, more than one liver foci in the preoperative imaging and uh, the size of the largest liver, liver focus is more than five centimeter in the preoperative imaging. Each of the previous are assigned one point and a total score of zero represents a low risk of recurrence in the next five years. Uh, score of one to two represents an intermediate risk and three to five is a high risk of recurrence in the next five years. A low FONG score and in turn a low risk of recurrence of metastasis should be regarded as a favoring factor of pursuing a more aggressive therapeutic course. The next step should be the evaluation of the local resectability of the metastasis tumor itself as well as the readiness of the, pati uh, the patient to undergo such an aggressive treatment. The patient should be free of other severe illness, uh, ASA score uh, of 1 to 2, with performance status or Eastern uh, Cooperative Oncology, or Oncology Group score uh, from, from 0 uh, to 2. This means the patient can at least walk and take care of his basic needs. No other irresectable metastasis elsewhere. Local R0 resections is possible without impairing liver or lung functions. This means for liver, no liver cirrhosis or only a child A uh, compensated liver disease. More than 30% future functional liver remnant is possible. Possible safety margin uh, from the central uh, vessels of the liver. For lung, enough postoperative residual lung volume is possible and no technical uh, difficulties of uh, R0 resection. At last, what is the outcomes after colon resection for tumors uh, or evaluation uh, of the surgical procedures? Interoperative, we must think of uh, the oncological surgical principle did we perform a sound uh, uh, oncological procedure with TME or CME principle? Did any intraoperative complications occur, like uh, ureter injury, major bleeding, or difficult anastomosis? When so, uh, have we uh, made an ileostomy to protect the anastomosis? Postoperative period. Uh, are any complications occurred in the postoperative period? Uh, for example, leaka leakage of the anastomosis, wound in complications, surgical site infection, general complications like pneumonia, was the patient discharged in a good shape, capable of living a relative healthy and enjoyable life? And now to the pathology report. We should check the confirmation of the tumor through checking the type and the grading of the tumor. Confirmation of uh, sound resection techniques. This appears in uh, R0 resection, more than 12 lymph nodes harvested, and safety margin of at least 5 cm is documented. Lastly, the ter determinant of further uh, therapy of the patients, the uh, PTNM staging, uh, L and V staging, uh, uh, microsatellite stability or, or instability. That concludes our topic for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye.